Malaysia can utilize groundwater in a sustainable manner if the right sustainable policy coupled with better management groundwater systems are implemented. The potential for groundwater development and its utilization for public consumption in the future is also huge, say Hydrogeology Research Centre Director Dr. Saim Surakman of the National Hydraulic Research Institute of Malaysia, Nahrim. He said that currently, groundwater made up only 2% of total public water usage, while the rest is from surface water. Probably we have to uh, you know, uh, study further the, the potential of utilizing. Of course, certainly the, the potential is there. But of course, you have to look at the cost and the technologies available, you know, whether the project will be viable. But of course, I think the, the potential is always there to, for us to, uh, you know, uh, to move up and uh, utilizing some of this kind of uh, water that is, uh, you know, uh, at the moment we are only probably dependent on one source, of, which is from the surface. Uh, many states uh, actually has got potential for uh, groundwater development, but of course, uh, as you have seen earlier, uh, Kelantan is one of the uh, probably uh, the most uh, viable uh, groundwater development, yeah, <clears throat> because the aquifer is very rich and the recharge is very high, so that you can tap uh, groundwater sustainably. He said Selangor is one of the states that would need additional sources of water due to rising industrial and population demand. He also added that Malaysia would adopt groundwater as one of the sources of public water supply at a ratio of between 10 to 20 percent by 2020. But of course, uh, I would say Selangor will probably requires a supplementary source because because of the demand from you know from industry, demand from the population growth. Yeah? So the demand will be higher. Uh, so I would say sooner or later you have to op or you have to look for other supplementary sources, just you know, other than just uh, looking for surface water. We have actually sat down and trying to probably uh, figure out uh, probably by the year 2020, yeah, uh, what would be the capacity or what would be the percentage of uh, water supply in Malaysia utilizing groundwater. Probably we are hoping that you know at least 10, 10 to 20 percent by probably year 2020 uh, that Malaysia will be adopting groundwater as one of the uh, sources for public water supply. Meanwhile, I Kelantan's Niamberhad AKSB, the water supply services operator in Kelantan, is targeting 100 percent utilizations of groundwater in the next five to ten years for its supplies of water to the public. The head of Department of Technical Development in Senior One Mohd Zamri Wan Ismail said currently groundwater utilization only constituted about 41% of public water supply while the remaining came from surface water. Uh, kita operator Kelantan kita dah uh, mewarisi uh, penggunaan air bawah tanah ni sejak tahun 1935. Itu dah 75 tahun. Jadi um, uh, apa ni secara aktifnya kita dah um, um, apa ni, menggunakan uh, air tanah ni sebanyak 41% sekarang ni daripada keseluruhan penggunaan. Tapi dari segi strategic planning kita, kita akan um, mengadakan transformasi penggunaan air tanah ni uh, sehingga ke mungkin 100% di masa depan. Kerana kita develop a new system, a system baru, kita namakan river infiltration system tadi yang dalam presentation saya tadi. Maknanya dia, um, kita uh, akan menggunakan uh, air tanah sepenuhnya di masa-masa depan. Zamri is one of the panelists at the Sam Darby launch on dialogue which address the area of groundwater development by using sustainable method and best practices in conjunction with Asia Water Conference and Exhibitions 2010 which took place at Kuala Lumpur Convention Centre on Wednesday. The new system will allow better utilization of groundwater in a very sustainable manner, he said. On cost effectiveness, he said groundwater development compared to surface water can cut operation costs up to 20%. At the same event, Datuk Tio Yen Hua of Suranjaya Pekmatan Air Negara, SPAN, addressed the need for a proper act to regulate the water industry players, which is the Water Industry Services Act. Our per capita consumption that is per day, eh? is about 205 litres per person eh, per day and that is uh, quite high uh, compared with many other countries you know. In I think uh, uh, we, we probably only need about 165 that is uh, a, a world standard yeah? and uh, in many other countries it has gone to about 150 uh, in Malaysia certain states like the Penang is the highest 289 
liters per day per person I and mean, per person liters per day in addition the public also needs to be taught on the importance of water the needs to conserve and to use it wisely um, uh, you need to build up the infrastructure and uh, infrastructure cost for water services industry is, is very capital intensive so when you have uh, need to put in a lot of uh, capital expenditure then it will it will impact on tariff so so if you wanted to continue to have a reasonable tariff i think all of us must conserve uh, uh, using water so that is i think uh, an important message that uh, you know span would like to put across adopt okay. some rainwater harvesting you know uh, where you can use it for non portable purposes eh? and then uh, when you take showers when you do not uh, use too much water in that sense you know and uh, there are a lot of ways that we can save water in a sense that the uh, even uh, water that you use to wash your your your, your shirts eh, using washing machine some of the water is really can be reused for for toilet purposes so uh, we have uh, you know in our case we put it as a condition for all the licensee you know service provider for them to 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 have some program to promote water conservation and uh, i think the uh, the other one is is through the tariff structure uh, we would like to see that uh, those who use excessively uh, will have to pay a uh, much higher tariff uh, because uh, I think that uh, they do not need that much of water.